Okay, we're going to move right on to it our next forever, speaker. Sorry. It means forever. Oh, right. So you're selling forever. Right, I get it. John, what's that quote that you have about, um, um, I met this guy, uh, this organization, the symbols of double cross, and they tried to sell me a bridge. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. The delivery stuff, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll work on that one. I'll work on that one. Yeah, I came back to science fiction, and Yeah, yeah, you got it. Anyway, let's move on. Um, our next speaker has traveled probably halfway across the continent to be here, if my geography is accurate. I'd like to welcome Tom Padgett. Kentucky's not a continental thing, but it's... Um, I think about three months ago, we were all having fun on the internet. You could punch your name into the John Travolta translator. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Theo Parkin. <laughs> the, um, the last time I was in Clearwater was uh, December 2000. Um, I was handed an injunction. I was not named in the injunction, but I was handed an injunction. And I said to the, the guy was kind of a big goofy guy. The render is standing in the background. And uh, I said, you don't even know who I am. He says, yes, we do, Mr. Padgett. So I took a piece of paper. Um, I got some great news. Um, in 2006, I co-produced a movie called The Bridge. I was the on-site technical advisor, and I had a small acting role, which squarely falls into the category of don't quit your day job. <laughs> uh, it actually turned out to be a really good, nice film. Um, our, our film expert here gave it two thumbs up to the, to the film critic. Uh, the uh, writer-director was a very brilliant young man um, who was actually going off to film school, it was like a senior in high school, and put this thing together. We filmed it in six days in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, the end results, it was fabulous. It got uh, it opened up or debuted in uh, Norway at uh, Operation Clambake's 10th uh, anniversary at Andreas's uh, place. Um, and the writer-director, uh, Brent Hanover, um, immediately got uh, fair game. They went after him, dug up stuff, and I'm not going to repeat what it is, whatever, but within a month, he wanted to withdraw his name and wanted to withdraw the movie, The Bridge. And, um, and he did. Um, uh, simultaneously, I had a website called thebridgemovie.net. Proud sponsor of Flag Down. And um, is this on? Can you hear me? Um, we let that lapse. There was a threat that it had some kind of conflict in it, and it kind of, it's been dark for the last, uh, it's been down for the last seven years. Uh, as of this past Monday, it's back up. Mm. And a shout out to uh, a lot of you may know Mark uh, Plummer. He goes by Warrior, and he is the uh, Web designer is the is the webmaster for that site to help me get it back up. It's a it's a pretty cool site. Did a great job, and it is a good movie. Um, moving on, when you go to a conference, I'm going to get into a little bit of my personal stuff. A lot of it's on the net, but when you go to a conference, you want to think that you're taking something away from it, something something new. I've been into the whole Scientology thing for years. But, and I was trying to go through some of these speakers and making some quick notes. As you go down the list here, John Duggan 
Back to us, right, John? Guiding on the Okay. He gave us uh, a, a, a new, fresh reminder that the emotion of anger is very appropriate when it comes to Scientology. Yeah. And um, like John McGee, I was public. I was never on staff. If you went to a Scientology uh, dictionary and you looked up the word dilettante, <laughs> there would be my picture. <laughs> Uh, Arnie Lerma, he was uh, he was just getting out of the meat grinder in 1978 when I was getting into it. Uh, John Sweeney, my uh, heretofore, Mr. Bean was my favorite British humorist. <laughs> you have surpassed him. <laughs> Rowan <laughs> Atkinson, man, that's, you're up there. Victoria Britton, uh, I got a chance to sit down and talk with her about 45 minutes. Um, in my Scientology story, I lost my children for eight to ten years. She lost a child forever, like people saying. It just, it just breaks your heart. And there's any kind of support or any kind of backing or any kind of hugs or love that you send her, you need to do it. Awesome lady. Russell Miller, uh, he uh, was one of the original people when I was getting out in the uh, phasing out in the early 90s. Uh, his book was one that just helped me move through and understand and all bullcrap. Um, but the whole Hubbard story of his background, his education, his whole Navy thing, um, my father um, grew up in Oklahoma, upstanding. Went to some pretty good schools, um, Georgia Tech, NYU. Um, he was a lieutenant officer in the United States Navy in World War II. Um, he did see real action. He was a flight deck officer on USS Ticonderoga and saw his shipmates burned alive by kamikaze. So he's got, so, but you can check my dad's background and all his educational background and all his uh, Navy uh, records, and he's got real medals, are true. So, I mean, it just kind of reminded me that, and he went on with life and he didn't create a little bit. Michael Pilsen is my new hero. And I'm going to tell you why. He did, he, and when he spoke, he apologized. He actually offered an apology. When we were in Scientology, we learned to hate. We learned to uh, have bad feelings against laws and sites and SPs and PTSs. And, and as I was sorting through a lot of stuff and I was going through some bad stuff, you start to see that the, the, the idea of compassion is, is not there. It's not there in the teachings, and it's kind of almost like all I've been trained out. So forgiveness is uh, is a really neat thing. Uh, actually, it brought a tear to my eye. Thank you very much, Chris Shelton. Um, he's a good speaker, and he brings a, a newer, fresher time frame in, in terms of leading Scientology. Uh, like him, I was recruited into Scientology by Love Bomb, a very attractive woman. Yeah. <laughs> Set the hook. Yeah, I'm, I'm going. <laughs> Um, but at, at the end of his talk, he, he said he got out with his wife and his children intact. I didn't. So I had, a, I had a whole long battle to go through. Let me give you a little a brief background. This microphone thing eats Viagra. It's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> In 1978, I was uh, transferred, my company transferred me from 
Boston, Massachusetts, down to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now, that's a culture shock. <laughs> and um, so within a month, I uh, um, encountered uh, an attractive young lady. And then she started to talk about Scientology. She brought me to the local mission there. Um, took a few courses. Um, next thing you know, I was on my road to so freedom. Mm -hmm. 22 years later, I found myself in a judge's chambers in a small town in Kentucky. And um, this is motion, so let me get through this. Um, in that room was a judge who couldn't even pronounce the state I was from, which is Massachusetts, not Massachusetts. And um, there is a public defender who is defending me. There is a civil attorney for my soon to be ex wife who voted signed on this. And there's a prosecutor. And they all told me that here's the offer come up with $50,000, get off the internet, stop talking about Scientology, and we'll let you go and we'll let you see your son breathing. And um, I didn't have fifty grand on me. But like, well, I, I meant to tell you, I was in an orange jumpsuit suit. I was handcuffed and I had leg shackles on. So you're not in a, in a position to negotiate. Um, I, and I couldn't. I couldn't compromise. So I talked it over with my... Uh, I asked them to get it in writing so at least you could see what it was all about. So you could show it later on, but they wouldn't do that. So they marched me out into the courtroom, and I was sentenced to five years for correctional treatment. That means he was on prison for five years. The charges were allegations of failure to pay child support. Um, then they sent me into a, a small room, a uh, holding room, where I sat for about an hour, and uh, until, because I was in the local county jail, so they could. Uh, figure out how to transport you to the state facility to serve out your time. Um, I can tell you about the where's Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> that's where my that's where I was coming from. So um, That is obviously a, a huge WTF moment. You kind of think, what the hell happened? What, what, what just went on there? And so I needed to, and you have to explain this to people and friends and how Scientology is involved, and, and you needed some thing to translate or to, to explain to people how this happened. And I came up with the analogy of a spaceship it comes hovering down, lands. Thank you. Tom Cruise? <laughs> right. So, uh, little green men come out, and you're dancing, and like we were dancing before there, and, and uh, they, they integrate with you, you get to know them. Um, I had two children with one of them, and they get back into the spaceship, they fly off, and now you got to explain to the authorities, you got to explain to other people, you got to explain to your family and friends. That, that this actually occurred. It occurred. And it's occurred to a lot of us. Um, so between that period of when I was recruited into Scientology at the age of 28 in 1978 until the time I was sentenced to prison, correctional treatment, now what does that tell me? To change your thinking. You just get your head, get your head straight. Um, there was a uh, waking up period, obviously, you all have them. They're all a little different. Uh, the first um, waking up period for me was 1984. I was at the Cincy York and I tested through the state of clear. Uh, my wife being a devoted scientologist, so I wanted to do it. This is fabulous. And, you know, I, could, I didn't feel anything. Uh, I said uh, to the, <laughs> the other. Um, I just, I just don't feel anything. He says, uh, 
Well, it's, it's probably because you're a natural player. Okay. I'm a natural player. But what we need to do is we need to get another thousand dollars from you so you can do the clear certainty rundown. So now I'm thinking. So I, I asked him, I was a little sarcastic, I said, um, will that make me a certain clear? I don't, I don't see it on the grade chart. Where's, where's certain clear come in? So that's like the first thing that goes, boop, something doesn't smell right here. Uh, but you're just kind of drifting along. Uh, 1987 was a big year, uh, waking year. Um, there was a flag promoter in uh, Washington, D.C., at the D.C. org, and they were doing a big push for the IAS. And uh, I, I didn't want to do that. I mean, I didn't. Anyways, my, my devoted Scientologist wife uh, thought it was important that I stake my soul and make contributions to the IAS and gives them my American Express card. And he puts $2,000 down. Well, I have two American Express cards. One is mine and one is my corporate card. And the bills go to your corporate office. And so, and I realized that she gave him the wrong card. And so I started ar arguing with this black guy in, in one of his faux Navy uh, uniforms. And he was getting kind of testy. And I told him, you need to take this off. If this needs to come up. So, well, it's my policy. We can't refund it. I said, but you got the wrong card. It's too late. It went up. Next thing you know, my company is 1,500 uh, miles away. He had called from the senior VP controller saying, what the? Uh, what are you doing? What are you, where, where are you putting Scientology on, on your corporate credit card? So I paid it off. I had to explain it. And, um, another time in 1987, uh, I was at a big uh, flag event. It was at night. And uh, they got through the event. And uh, I was sitting there with my, uh, we're standing at, at the end of the event. And everybody's clapping, and they're looking at Ron in his sailor suit. And um, we are, I've got my daughter on my left side, my right side, my son, my, and my mother is standing over there. And they're, these people are going, hip, hip, hooray, hip, hip, hooray, hip, hip, hooray. We've all seen that, heard that. And I'm looking around. And then, uh, but you look around, everybody's in this robotic trance. Literally, and uh, and the mother of my children is part of it. Uh, but my both my kids are looking up at me like, what, "What's going on? Dad? What's, what is this?" Um, and, and it does. It gives you another impression that something really isn't right there. But it's quite wrong. Um, and in 1991, December 1991. I was in a, um, um, it's like that, one of these airline uh, VIP rooms waiting for flights, stuff like that. And I, and I came across the Time Magazine article from May of that year. And I had a subscription to Time Magazine in my home. I never got it. Uh, and I'm sure it was for a reason. And I read this thing. And I was like, oh my God, what am I in? Now I've got to think about how to get my family out, how to get my wife out, how to get my kids out. How am I going to do that? And I went to uh, libraries and did research on cults. Um, you could take out uh, 20 books on cults, 19 would have Scientology in there. And um, so I tried to address this uh, with um, my ex. And over the next six months, off and on. And one day I came home, the house was stripped, the kids were gone, she filed for a divorce in a small town in um, We were in the process of moving to Michigan. Um, and that's when um, 12 years of civil litigation was advanced into another five years of criminal litigation, um, and it just became a nightmare. A little right now. Um, that's uh, 
Yep, and a lot of it's documented. It's on the internet. Um, they put a lot of stuff up there. But I was cleaning up some boxes, going through some old boxes uh, a couple, three months ago. I came up with some gems, some little nuggets of Scientology wisdom. Here is a uh, letter from Clagg, dated 17 September 95. Dear Tom, thank you for your letter. The money in the account was repaid to Laura Padgett due to being unable to receive services. It's all blur. <laughs> At FSO. She is still in good standing. Her data received this money was hers. Now this was a joint account and I had $8,400 in it. Um, you are not in good standing with the church and have been debt filed. Should you want to handle your status, you may do this. You may do the A to E steps covered in the ACO policy, the press blah, 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 blah. ML. Paul, <laughs> Paul Kellerall's. Now, to connect the dots, uh, this is 1995. I think 2008, the uh, anonymous uh, protesters uh, were they're trying to get injunctions against them. Paul Kellerall's was the I think it's the facilitator. Does anybody know that? that <laughs> During the appeals process, my attorney found this letter in the uh, in the files of the court. When you when you appeal a case, you, you get the files under review and the attorneys prepare it. And I think this is a civil court um, appeal. And it's from the flagship service organization, Church of Scientology, 28 February 1993. Dear Judge Butler and Judge Hinton, regarding Paget versus Paget, we may we bring to your attention that Scientologists only want to better themselves in life as well as the people around them. Please consider this in deciding this case. This is in no way an attempt to bias the court in favor of Laura. <laughs> <laughs> However, we, we can help eliminate any doubt you might have about the Church of Scientology and Alan Hubbard paving the road to total freedom and happiness. Mrs. Padgett only wants to do what's right for her and her children who can grow up to be more positive adults as Scientologists. Please write a call us today to find out more. We must arrange to remain anonymous that this is not policy for the church to interfere to hear about Laura and children as to many of her friends and expanding network of people who are surviving and getting better in life. This is a very important consideration when in regards and it's just a smiley face. <laughs> Put one letter in. July 2000. I'm living up in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And uh, one morning I get all these phone calls from brother, my brother, and sister, aunts, uncles, and friends. It's time you got to pick up the newspaper at you again. We ain't talking about it. So I get the, it's the Cape Cod Times. It's, it's more regional, but it'd be my hometown newspaper. And here's what the article says Church responds to allegations. I was pleased with the article of June 2nd. Man pleads innocent to the charges on the arrest of Thomas and Padgett for his non-payment of child support. Padgett complained in the article that the Church of Scientology has been exposing, has been opposing him. This could be nothing further from the truth. The Church feels that Padgett should not use his former wife's religion to deny support payments to provide for proper food, clothing, and shelter for his children. As ordered by the court, hopefully Padgett will someday Stop denying his children financial support. Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard wrote that the way to happiness includes that one love and help children and that they obey the laws of the land. Everyone hopes. Everyone. Everyone hopes Padgett will live up to these standards as it will make them, in the end, a happier person. 
Crank Open Public Affairs Church of Scientology in Boston. Right, so you connect the dots, you the same host of students that was uh, caught on camera punching Bob in the jaw. And apparently he thought if he was going to punch Bob, that was going to make Bob a happier person. <laughs> uh, going back to this refund thing, it's kind of funny. It, it, um, where they refunded uh, to the party that was in good standing with the church versus the party that was uh, not in good standing, that could be used as a precedent. So it's worth extracting more people out of the out of the church before they get in bad standing, before they become this or whatever. We need to ask for a refund. Not that they're going to get it, not that it's an instant. But it's an interesting thought. Here's a uh, court order. I tried to get most of this stuff on the web years ago. This one didn't make it. Supplemental report and recommendation. This is the court domestic relations measure on the response motion for clarification. The commissioner clarifies that during the upcoming holiday, holiday visitation, the respondent shall refrain from discussions of Scientology from inquiring about the petitioner for the belief and the actions, from discussions regarding the action with his child. Petitioner, commissioner, recommends the parties. Um, the appointment of Dr. Shirley Spence be vacated. Now, that was a psychologist. They didn't, they didn't want a psychologist, child psychologist at all. Um, my son, uh, this was in uh, 2001. My son would have been the same age as Al Brent. And I was able to talk Scientology to him at 17 years old. And the last one, this matter, this is a court order, this matter being present before the court, pursuant to the respondent's motions to restore the visitation and retract the bench warrant. The court being duly sufficiently advised is ordered that said motions be overruled. Therefore, uh, you know, I had that, it's like during 10 years of litigation, I would say five years I had bench warrants out for no reason at all. Just to take you away, just to harass you. Um, it was pretty, uh, pretty nasty experience. Um, <coughs> I bought, I printed up about. Um, 50 votes is more in the back. You can get these out, get them on the backs of your cars, wear them on your foreheads, put <laughs> them on the back of your seat jackets, whatever. Um, that's about all I have to say. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I can you open know, questions, or somebody say, Get out of here, we're ready for games. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned when you got back, you talked about three children. When? Well, I guess the best thing to explain it is I, I lost a lot of battles, but I won the war. My children are out of Scientology, they're both gone to college. Uh, they have nothing to do with Scientology. My daughter uh, graduated from Naval Flight School in a real Navy and is currently <laughs> commander of an aircraft uh, C-144 in the Coast Guard. <laughs> My son has given me three grandchildren, hey. and their uh, names are Padgett, uh, and none of them are assigned house or anything to assign house. Hey. So, um, I mean, and we're really close now, so we're, but there was a real buff time where uh, there was actually a period of senior that there was no contact with me. Um, she is still. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, um, did you have that one paragraph after the from the lady that used to be for your company? Yeah, actually, uh, I think what Ari's referring to is that it, there was I received a lot of harassment, uh, stalkings, um, followed by private eyes. Um, Tom Smith, can you verify that? Oh yeah, Kelly Bauer. Yeah, uh, stalking me in my place to work. I got uh, vandalism in my home in Michigan. I got broken in my home in um, Orlando, Florida. 
Um, when I was working in Orlando, Florida, and my executive secretary uh, was approached by some anonymous person and offered five thousand dollars to stay away from me, or just not to, is that what you're referring to? It's on the, it's on the line. Um, my companies received uh, this goofy harassment notes uh, that I was a religious bigot. Uh, that I was a philander, uh, and uh, my immediate boss was senior VP of the company. He understood, and we got to got to move it around. I got to move from uh, Michigan down to Orlando and back up to Cape Cod. Um, but then they start sending these to the investors of the company, of the building, and um, just goofy stuff. That Tom Patch is this, Tom is this, and this is a lot of spider. And um, that, you can't, you know, you can't risk your company saying, you know, so they say, we need to get this guy out of this property and put him in another property. Because I'm managing like $30 million assets. Uh, in 1994, I had a six figure income. In 1996, it dropped down to a four figure income. During the 10 years, I spent $132,000 on legal fees. Wow. Um, so. Any other questions? A lot of stuff is on the net. Hey, uh, please talk about the movie, uh, the Bridge movie. It's a real, it's a real neat movie. Um, link it. If any of you with uh, computer technical skills can know how to mirror it, but, um, it might be. Attack and um, you brought down. And lastly, uh, thank you to my wife, Jeannie. Shout out to her. I love you. And uh, the walk. Uh, she let me off for a week so I could come down and hang with you.